Uh, so we'll kick off then with the slides now. Um, the way the the kind of half an hour will run is uh, we'll pass over to, to Pat Lardner, who's from Irish Once, and he'll give you a little bit um, of, a, of a background to Sustainathon and just say a couple of words. We'll then pass on to Aideen O'Leary, who's from the Green Team Network, who were the winners of Sustainathon 2020. And then myself and Julianne will uh, talk to you about the competition and what's it all about this year, how to register, how to take part. And then we are open for questions and comments. So there is a Q&A box. So feel free to drop any questions or comments that you have in there. And we'll hopefully have time at the end to go through them. Um, but if not, we can, uh, we can uh, circulate responses after the event. OK, so Pat, I'm going to hand over to you. Great. Good morning. Thanks very much, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. So listen, it's, it's really exciting that we're actually back to kick off another Sustainathon. As Sarah mentioned, the original initiative came out of our member engagement working group, and it was really about how do we get and how do we encourage and enable members and professionals in the industry, in the association, to collaborate around some of the really big challenges. Clearly, there's no bigger challenge than that of climate and sustainability. And um, it's also very, very much aligned with what we're trying to do strategically around developing capability, demonstrating leadership, enabling engagement. And I think that, you know, to be fair, the inaugural event that was run in 2020 was a huge success because it was collaborative, it was inclusive, it was innovative, it was all the values that we're really trying to encourage. And I know they're held very uh, dearly within all the member firms of the association. We, and I remember, you know, as well, going back to 2020, that with the link back to the sustainable development goals, particularly around climate, uh, we had a very, very tough job in terms of judging what were some really, really brilliant entries. And they were a mixture of folks um, from industry. We also had hoped to encourage students to get involved. That was a little bit more difficult last time around because of COVID, but definitely what we would have seen and what I would be encouraging you very strongly is to get involved, put yourself forward, there's no doubt, and what we got very strongly from everyone that we spoke to was that the very fact that people were involved meant that they developed new knowledge, they developed new networks, they definitely as well got a better appreciation for the nature of the challenge. And I think it created a very, very strong community. And ultimately, again, it links back to our goals as an industry, our vision of the Ireland as being a premier location to enable and support global investing because we have capability, we've innovation and we've trust. And I think that this particular initiative really demonstrates all those in spades. So once again, uh, thanks to Grant Thornton for all their work in putting it forward and supporting it. And I'd really just like to hand over to our very, very worthy and successful winners from last time over to Aideen O'Leary. Thanks very much. Thanks, Pat, and thanks Irish Funds and Grant Thornton. It's great to be back hearing that Sustainathon 2022 is about to kick off. Um, it's been a very strange world since we met way back when, when uh, I was just getting to know my teammates um, for what was the first Sustainathon 2020. Um, can I move the screen on there? I'm trying. Uh, could I ask you, Fiona, please? While well, that's happening, just to, to echo what Pat uh, said very much, um, it, lest I don't say it at the end, I would absolutely encourage anyone to get involved. Um, we as a group, when we started out, were kind of, um, I suppose, uh, initially put off by we were launched into a COVID world and we were kind of, would it work? Would we be able to do this in a virtual world? Uh, it's a bonus if you can do it in the in the real world, if you like, but it is possible, as we all know, for the last few years to, to get projects off the ground. And actually, it was a very welcome kind of distraction at times to be able to focus on the Green Team Network and the Sustainathon during COVID time. I'm trying to, sorry, that just isn't moving for me, Fiona. Sorry, would you, could I possibly move to the next slide? Thank you. Yeah, so, so just to give you a flavour of, um, well, what was involved, as Pat said, there were lots of fantastic applicants. Um, I think where our concept, I like to think where we got over the line is that we were uh, proposing a network or a vehicle to bring all these wonderful ideas together and almost a channel. And um, that is pretty much what we set out to do. The idea being to bring people from the industry, be you, young, old, junior, senior, big firm, small firm together, share that knowledge, leverage off each other, 
all uh, in a, with a single focus on raising everyone's game in collaborating for um, addressing climate change. And we were originally a group of uh, four uh, who founded Green Team Networks. As I'm senior from BlackRock, I have to give her 100% credit for the idea of the Green Team Network in the first instance. Magdalena Supernat from SSNC, uh, Ashley McCaffrey, who became our fantastic kind of project manager and thankfully decided to stay with us through the course. And what was wonderful about Sustainathon as well is having a mentor, which so anyway, to bounce ideas off because you can get stuck in the weeds of your project and not see the wood for the, the trees. So she was an invaluable and always available mentor to us uh, as we teased out our, our proposition. Um, when we did thankfully get over the line through the Dragon's Den process, we had to set to work and that involved deciding what were going to be our core areas of work. So four work streams we came up with. Uh, of communications on structure, developing an online portal uh, and education focus, um, looking at some kind of accreditation and award system for the industry. And what I'll get to shortly is the Green Pledge, which we're particularly proud of. I'll try page down now. No, sorry, Fiona, you'll have to do it again. Yeah, but none of this would be possible without the help of people, needless to say. And this is just a snapshot of the firms that opted to get involved um, as part of our steering committee at the Green Team Network. Um, now, it's a lot of names, but bear in mind, you're talking about very busy people with day jobs giving up in a voluntary capacity. So while it might look like a lot of people, we always need those people and more. Um, so 19 firms are represented, but it does convey the appetite out there um, to get involved. So what I would say is, please, uh, we're always looking to hear from those who are interested in getting involved and we need more all the time because to do the kind of jobs and projects we want to do requires people and availability of time. So I would just mention that point. So the, the three kind of focus areas for like, what are we about? What are we really trying to do? Well, in the first instance, we wanted to set up some kind of online resource and that became so invaluable, obviously during COVID. We would have loved to think that we could kick off the Green Team Network by going out as a group from the industry and planting trees together or cleaning the beaches, but we were prevented from doing that obviously in COVID. So we had to get inventive. So we did set up our network, or sorry, our, our website and try to fill it with um, uh, appropriate and useful content. So looking at developing educational supports of best practice guidelines to get your ideas off the ground, to maybe persuade internally in your firms, if you have a proposition to promote sustainability, to help you know, leverage off the experiences and practices of others. And then to help, as and Pat alluded it to, you know, the, uh, the, the requirement to upskill and for us all to try and develop some kind of a command of the language around climate change and climate risk and what part we can play. There's a, you know, every other day there's a new course or qualification coming out, but we, we tried to kind of help in the Green Team Network by give a flavor of some of those courses, even having reviews from some of the participants from those courses as part of our, um, resource to those um, tapping into the Green Team Network. And, you know, as I said, it is about knowledge sharing and coming together collectively. And to give you just a picture of some of what we did in the last while. Uh, so we officially uh, launched in March, 2021, um, timed it with St. Patrick's Day, I recall, uh, by kicking off a green challenge across LinkedIn. I'm sure some of you partook um, in that, which was just to kind of get people thinking, get people moving, you know, what could I do differently? One or two behaviours and kind of pass it on like a nice bucket challenge effectively online. So that was great in terms of get, gathering that initial um, momentum. And we've had to get creative and inventive since then with interesting content, relevant content. And huge thanks to our Steerco members and member and firms in the industry for providing us with the ideas uh, around this. But we now have 1300 followers on LinkedIn approximately 450 subscribers so we that that would be on our website and they will automatically receive um, our newsletter updates but most of the updates are in fact on LinkedIn and very importantly and very proudly as I say the Green Pledge is the initiative we really got off the ground um, an online digital tool to help firms in the industry kind of I suppose checklist their various environmental practices um, look at a huge menu of options because whether you're big or small, early on or advanced, there's always something you can do. And we wanted to help 
kind of inspire firms in the industry with that process and give them some kind of measurement system. So Green Pledge, check it out if you haven't done so already on the Green Team Network uh, website, you'll see what's involved. And we're always available, and I will say that. Um, you'll find that anyone involved in this is happy to talk to anyone else in the industry and about any of their questions or, or queries um, in this space. Uh, we have tried to make the website as relevant really across both your professional and personal life with examples of what we can do to be better at home, uh, better in our communities and um, what we can do in our industries, be we working from home or not, and in the workplace, uh, which as we know can be your office or your home environment. Um, so that's, the, that's just a snapshot of what we've done to date in terms of the content and so on, 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 on a kind of social media side of things or digital media side of things. Could I move to the next slide, please, Fiona? Yeah, and uh, also, I suppose, as I said, um, we would have loved for an awful lot of our activity to be in person, but most of it happened to be online, of course. So we had 12 events so far since we launched. Um, participation, thanks uh, to Irish Funds at their conferences where we would uh, you know, have those chats with those of you uh, in attendance passing by and very often getting an opportunity to persuade someone to, to get involved with us. The launch of the Green Pledge during Climate Finance Week, a number of really interesting interviews and webinars, um, one being, and back to the upskilling side of things, the rise and rise of sustainability roles. We know there's so many of those opportunities arising out there, but how do you match that with skills and upskilling and so on? So that was a really interesting one. Um, and we've represented Green Team Network at various other industry and uh, uh, non-funds non industry events uh, in relation to ESG and sustainability. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, um, sorry. So, but before I pass over, it was really just to say that there's a lot more of that we hope to come in the autumn and into 2023. And just to urge two things, we would love more of you to be involved because we're busy people with lots to do. Um, and we will be looking at our existing work streams and doing a bit of a revamp or a rejig or a refresh, I should say, in the next few weeks. So we'd love to know if people who are willing to, even though you're, we, do, we don't have the terms of reference quite worked out, um, we'd love to hear of those who might be interested in hearing more. And finally, get involved with Sustain the Fund 2022. It has per both personally and professionally been such a rewarding experience. And I know I can vouch for my teammates and those who've got involved in the, the Steerco for that. So you've absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. So best of luck to all. Thank you, Sarah and Pat. Thanks very much, Aideen, that was great. Um, I'm gonna pass over now to, to Julianne, who's gonna take us through our uh, judging panel and the actual competition this year. Thank you, Sarah, and thanks, Aideen. Okay, so firstly, just to introduce our judging panel for Sustain It On 2022. So we have Colin Feely, who is the Head of Financial Services Audit at Grant Thornton. We have Pat Lardner, who you've heard from earlier, CEO of Irish Funds, Anne Shields, founder of FinLexis, and Mark Harland, head of sustainability at IQEQ. So we have four great judges uh, involved this year, and we're very thankful for them for giving their time. Okay, so moving on to Sustain It On 2022. So the theme this year is centered around Sustainable Development Goal 13, Climate Action. Uh, so when the UN obviously uh, set out their 17 goals, um, 13 is obviously a very important one, and that's the theme that we have used for this year's Sustainathon. So the task, so the task this year is centered around action measure number five. So industry um, commitments and increasing those commitments. And this is um, part of uh, Ireland's sustainable finance roadmap. So Sustainable Finance Ireland are the lead for action measure number five uh, within this roadmap. So Sustainable Finance Ireland work to position and promote Ireland as a leader in sustainable finance. It achieves this by providing thought leadership, raising awareness on excellence and best practice, building capacity in the sector and catalyzing innovation with supportive frameworks and tools. All of the activities are aligned with the government's Ireland for Finance strategy and annual action plan. And in, this includes the annual Climate Finance Week um, and the Sustainable Finance Skill Net. 
The Financial Centres for Sustainability Network is a collective of 39 financial centres who are all working together to achieve the objectives set out by the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement. And it's estimated that this network represents 80% of the global equity market and 76 trillion of equity market capitalisation. So there are an increasing number of Irish located financial services sector firms, large corporates and semi-states aligning themselves to relevant climate, wider ESG, net zero and most recently nature related commitments. And an example of this is the fourth annual State of Play report by the UNDP hosted Financial Centres for Sustainability Network. And they've identified several key areas where the focus is required to underpin progress around the sustainable finance agenda. Overall, the report provides compelling evidence that financial centres initiatives were characterised by strong growth, increased scope, greater maturity and accelerated action across 2021. The assessment that they surveyed, 29 financial centres around the globe, and this revealed key insights on how financial centres across all continents are mobilising their capital, resources, connectivity and expertise to support low carbon transition and the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the team selected for this Sustainathon will be tasked with developing solutions for financial centres to increase their industry commitments regarding SDG 13 climate action. So the team selected will consist of six people and one facilitator or a mentor, as Aideen mentioned from prior years. And as I said, they're tasked with developing solutions for these financial centres. Each team must submit a proposal outlining their solution. And this can take the form of corporate initiatives, new technologies, product innovations, new platform engagements, regulatory changes. So it's open um, and, you know, any solutions are welcome. So the initiative is open to individuals at any level from the Irish funds member firms and as Pat mentioned earlier college students from any discipline are really encouraged to participate and we have reached out to a number of colleges and we hope that they will um, see obviously uh, the LinkedIn posts over the next week in order for them to apply. Submissions will be scored based on predefined criteria so this will be ease of implementation, relevance to the industry, scalability and impact. And when the proposal has been chosen by our judging panel, Grant Thorntel will then support the winning initiative to assist them in development and implementation of this. And this may take the form of providing technical resources, the provision of workshops with Grant Thornton and the Green Team Network or helping to write a strategy document. So to register for Sustain It On 2022, you need to um, go to uh, the Grant Thornton website and there is a link there um, and the slides will be uh, available after the webinar. So you need to register by the 30th of September. And once submitted, applicants will be reviewed and shortlisted by a panel. So there are a limited number of places available for Sustain It On 2022. Uh, so all applicants, um, you know, if you are interested, you should register as soon as possible. Uh, applicants will be put into multidiscipline teams and each team will be assigned a facilitator. The shortlisted entry will then be invited to take part in the two-day hackathon. So this is a Dragon's Den style judging panel on the second day and the winning entry will be chosen. And the winning team will showcase their proposal at the Irish Funds Annual Global Funds Conference in May 2023. So we have just set out a timeline. So obviously our virtual launch is today and registration is opened. The submission deadline, as noted, is the 30th of September. Successful entries will be announced on the 7th of October. The hackathon team event will be on the 19th of October with the Dragon's Den style judging panel on the 20th. And then uh, the winning team will uh, showcase in May 2023. And we're now uh, happy to take any questions through the Q&A function. And if you do um, have questions and you don't want to do them through the function, you can email us at that email address noted gtsustainathon at ie.gt.com and we will answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Julian. Um, so, and thank you very much to to all of our speakers today. Pat and Adrian, it's great to to have you on board and 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 to listen to to your views on on the the initiative and and how important it is for for the industry and um. It, it is a it is a good collaborative and fun event, so we would encourage uh, any of all of you to to get involved. And if you do have any questions, uh, I suppose now is the time. Uh, there is one coming up here. 
What were the targeted SDG goals at the 2020 event? Um, so that was around um, climate change as well, Aideen, wasn't it? It was climate change yeah, and, it, the... and uh, affordable, clean energy. Mm-hmm. So as long as it kind of um, fit into either of those categories, I suppose affordable and clean energy is, you know, not unrelated to climate action. So we, um, we I suppose, focused on a combination of the two. Question for Aideen, uh, why do you think the green team was so successful? Okay, well, I suppose uh, two two key factors. One, as I said, um, the concept in the first place had been proven to work in that um, Suzanne Senior, who was on on my team, um, headed up green team for BlackRock in Dublin, but tapped into all the other BlackRock offices around the world. you know, when it came to looking for inspiration or ideas or experience of trying different environmental initiatives. So there was an element of being able to find out what worked well, what didn't. So, you know, it was kind of that kind of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why wouldn't we try this for the, the firms in the industry? Even if there's competitors coming together, I think the term I've come across is co opetition Even if you're competitors, technically, we should all be working together when it comes to tackling climate change. And I do think that's a mindset that is out there. And I think the second point is, I think, what stood in our favour. And, you know, when we got to the Dragon's Den stage, we had a snapshot of who our our competitors were. And we were quite daunted going into that process. I'm not going to lie to you. But I think what it was, what swung it, well, Pat was on the panel. He can tell me if I'm wrong about this, is the fact that, if we had the network, we could bring the ideas through. So the fact that we were proposing the vehicle or the channel probably, I, I think, maybe gave us the edge. Does that make sense? Okay, that's great. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, one other question. Can you give an example of a suitable idea for this year's submission? Um, I suppose that's the beauty of it and that anything goes. Um, it, I'm I'm kind of nearly I I almost really don't want to suggest anything in case because uh, I don't want to influence um but you will find that um when you come together as as a group and kind of brainstorm some of the ideas um anything that is I, I think that the key for us is going to be obviously Julianne touched on on, on what we'd be looking at from a from a submission perspective but practical um you know that it can be implemented and that potentially you know that we can that the, the green team network can be used as a conduit for it um it, like will be the things that we'll, we'll be playing on um on the day any suggestions please on how to gather a great team for the challenge any skills or interest um so really what we want is people who are you know ambitious and who are you know who, who who want to make a change and who are proactive so we will put the teams together the teams uh, will be um, a mix of different disciplines and you know that you know it won't be all auditors together uh, for example because I, there's that the creative part of my brain doesn't work anyway um, so we will mix up the teams but I think that the when you look at the at the submission um, online, it does have certain questions in there, which will bring in terms of your own um, ideas and you can kind of show your passion through that. I think that will be key that we have people because it's only a day, if you remember, so it's, it's a day and a half, um, really one intensive day that you'll be working together on the project and then you'll be presenting it the next morning. Um, so passion is probably, uh, is, is key. I mean, one one point I just might make, and again, Aidy mm-hmm. maybe can validate this is that, you know, again, when we did this the last time, the people who are working on many of the teams didn't know each other at all. So actually, mm-hmm. that's another important aspect of this is that it will also encourage and enable people to connect and build relationships and learn perspectives that they haven't. That in and of itself, notwithstanding the important underlying link to sustainability, uh, recommends this in a very, very significant way for people at all different levels of the industry, as has been said across all different disciplines and skill sets and experience levels. Yeah, Sarah, I had a question actually related to that. Did, you, did the teams get allocated on the day or in advance? Do you know who? It'll, it'll be in advance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you can for, touch point. Yeah. So, that's a, so that would save a bit of time. Um, like we had the luxury of months of getting to know each other and finding out who was good at what, whereas this is all condensed into two so yeah it's a probably a preliminary in, intros wouldn't go astray yeah 
Okay, great. Um, so I don't think there's any other questions coming in, but as Julianne has said, um, our email address is there. So please send through any uh, questions that you do have. And um, if you do have any any comments, there will be posts on LinkedIn. So you should see a good bit of uh, good bit of traction. And, you know, we'd appreciate if, if you would like and share and, you know, encourage some of your own colleagues or your own personal contacts to uh, to, to submit a, their own uh, application into the competition because um, as everyone has, has attested to here, it is, a, it is a worthy event to get involved with. Okay, we'll close off there then. Thank you very much, everyone.